Tonight on SUTV News, it's been a very busy school year. And we're going to take a look back at the, all the good, the bad, and the ugly. All that and more right now. Thank you for joining us on this special senior edition of SUTV News. I'm Kim Garris. And I'm Marina Barnett. Summer break is almost here, and tonight we conclude SUTV's busy spring semester with a look back. Ray Shungle takes a look at SHIP's top stories for this semester. The spring semester kicked off with Barbara Lyman being named Shippensburg University's interim president after President Jody Harpster's retirement in late December. Following President Trump's inauguration, thousands of women marched on the streets of major cities. SHIP had its own march, starting at Horton and ending in the Cub Amphitheater. Late night chicken dippity customers got a breakfast for dinner option with the addition of breakfast sandwiches, tater tots, and French toast sticks. Shippensburg's political science professor, Dr. Allison Dagnus, made an appearance on National Geographic's Star Talk. Renovations to the Cumberland Valley Rails to Trails paved the way for a pedestrian bridge over Fogelsonger Road and extended pathways. In cold weather style, students with the Love Your Melon campaign helped battle pediatric cancer by supporting nonprofit organizations as well as raising funds to give hats to every family with pediatric cancer. And members of both student media organizations, WSYC and The Slate, celebrated their 60th anniversary. Ray Shungle, SUTV News. Be sure to tune into SUTV for more news when we return in the fall. The Women's Center, Campus Police, and Student Government have been working together to make campus a safer place. With a new app, they want to prevent sexual assault. Paige Ahrensmeyer has more. With the help of the developing RAVE app, students are connected to Campus Police if they ever feel in danger. A student is walking across campus, they can set this timer and the police see this. Um, it also connects to your GPS on the phone, so the police also see where you are. And so if the timer is set for you to make it across campus to your residence hall, um, and if you don't make it in time and you don't turn it off or the police do not see that uh, you made it, it will alert the police. Uh, Students can also text the police or, in a sudden emergency, press an alert button for immediate help. Active real-time, so it connects directly to the police. The free-to-student app releases in the fall. Paige Ahrensmeyer, SUTV News. Rave is funded with a grant from Student Senate, who created the idea of the app. The university has hired Dr. Nicole R. Hill, Dean of the College of Education and Human Services. She was chosen after a nationwide search following the retirement of Dr. James Johnson. Dr. Hill is coming from Syracuse University, where she was chair of the Department of Counseling and Human Services. She begins her work at Shippensburg on July 1st. SHIP Small Business Development Center is being recognized for its service. Chase Deemer has the story. The center housed in Groove Hall is honored by the U.S. Small Business Administration for its contributions to the local areas. I think this award is something that um, actually just helps us to realize, yes, we are doing the job that we were, that we are supposed to do, and we are being recognized as a community in the community as a as a very good resource for entrepreneurs. The center is now in its tenth year. We've uh, worked hard to gain a reputation in the community as being a great resource for, um, like I say, the entrepreneurs or the people that are interested in starting a business, pre-venture clients. Um, we take on anybody that comes in our door that has an idea for a business or wants to grow their business. A benefit for businesses and the university. For SUTV News, I'm Chase Deemer. The award will be presented on May 24th in Philadelphia. Researchers can't agree about the effectiveness of learning through online resources, but it is clear learning using a textbook or on a computer requires a different mindset. Bernadette Koff has the story. Use of technology in the classroom has allowed for more direct engagement between the students and the information being taught. Research has found that technology has increased student participation. 
there are times I've gone to classrooms and I've seen the students in the circle talking about the book as they're supposed to, but the students on the out of the ring using technology, using something like today's meet to carry on their own conversation about the conversation they're hearing inside. So it looks very different. But research has also found negative connections between social technology use and academic success. Dr. Christine Royce can see potential problems with the use of online information, if not used differently than books. There is a difference in how we read online versus how we read a textbook. So that's also something that needs to be explicitly discussed with students. Students' ability to focus determines their ability to use online learning effectively. Bernadette Koff, SUTV News. Research says increased participation in the classroom leads to increased motivation for students to do, to do well. But in similar studies, it has, been, it has been found to be a distraction to students studying outside the classroom. Non-traditional student and social work major Amanda Smith is named a 2017 Newman Civic Fellow. This national fellowship recognizes and supports community committed students invested in finding solutions to challenges facing their communities. Smith is a volunteer with the Shippensburg Community Resource Coalition and chairs the coalition's Booty Bundle Diaper Bank. Motivated by her own personal adversity as a widow and single parent of two children, Smith is dedicated to helping the community and experiencing the Newman Civic Fellowship. When we come back in world news, NASA captures another spatial phenomenon. Stay with us. Cassini snaps new photos and South Korea names a new president. Let's send it over to Darby with world news. FBI Director James Comey was fired by the Trump administration Tuesday. Comey was leading an investigation looking into connections between Trump associates and Russia during the 2016 election. Trump claims Comey was not able to effectively lead the bureau. The president says decision, the decision came from the advice of Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling on a special prosecutor to lead the Russian investigation. Liberal lawmaker Moon Jae-in is the newly elected president of South Korea. He defeated 12 rival presidential candidates. He now faces the challenges with foreign policies and balancing threats with North Korea's Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. North Korea is threatening to carry out its sixth nuclear test while the U.S. Conduct conducts nearby military maneuvers. President Moon says he'll tackle the security issue immediately. A Tampa supermarket construction site turned into a rescue site on Wednesday when a man was stranded 10 stories up on a crane. It took fire rescue about 90 minutes to get the man down. He became trapped when he had a medical issue. He was taken to a Tampa hospital. NASA spacecraft captured images of methane clouds drifting across Saturn's moon, Titan. The dark spots of the top are on the top are Titan's hydrocarbon lakes and seas. The Cassini spacecraft caught up Caught images 316,000 miles away on May 7th. That's it for this semester's World News. Let's head back to the desk. Over 1,200 students graduate from Shippensburg University on Saturday. But in this week's Know Your Ship, our Jake Gillespie found two students getting their degrees who share more than a graduation date. When Commencement Day comes, parents have nearly as much to celebrate as their graduates do. They've worked hard to help their students get through college. But I found one parent this semester who has double the reason to celebrate. Most college student moms are starting to worry about getting a good seat at graduation. But Janine Ola won't be worried about getting a seat to see her son Brad get his degree because she's getting hers too. A call from her brother inspired Janine to go for her diploma. And I said to him on the phone, Wow, you know, out of all mom's kids, five kids, I'm the only one that doesn't have her bachelor's degree. And I hung up the phone with him and I thought, well, I'm working at a college. Why, why don't I finish my degree? Janine holds two jobs on campus as the secretary for both the modern language department and the football team. It's busy enough just being a mother, but with a full-time job and taking college classes, Janine somehow found a way to do it all. It, it is quite busy, especially around recruiting time and a lot of and, uh, finals week and recruiting going together. Sometimes I call them the perfect storms when things like that happen, but, but we made it through. Janine works hard, but she's still always willing to make time to help her son. It's really convenient having her working here because it gives me someone to go to to get advice on some of the more intricate inner workings of how to 
actually get things done in the university. They didn't plan to graduate at the same time, but for their family, it will be the perfect <laughs> way to end their academic careers. But it's going to be neat to actually finally get that because really everybody in my family will then have their degree um, and everybody in my extended family as well. So it's kind of neat because he, he and I will be the last in our nuclear family to get our degrees. Graduation will be Saturday, May 13th in Highgis Fieldhouse. If you have a question for Know Your Ship, leave a comment on our Facebook page or use the hashtag Know Your Ship. Now, let's send it back to the desk. Shippensburg Field Hockey won its second national title this year, a victory players credit with more than athletic prowess. It was the 12th man, Amanda Strauss. June 18th was an ordinary summer day for Shippensburg Field Hockey. Coming off a disappointing 2015, the Lady Raiders were enjoying summer break, prepping for a new season with high hopes and expectations. That was all about to change. I remember hearing my phone buzz, and I was like, who would be calling me? Like, this feels so early in the morning. Word for word, she goes, hey, fish, um, I have some bad news. And I was like, okay, and she goes, I know you and Coach just got back from Australia, and I know you had Kelly's wedding yesterday, and I don't want to ruin an exciting time for you, but um, Strauss uh, died yesterday. I was coming back from the beach, and I checked my phone, and I had like 20 missed calls, 20 missed messages on GroupMe, and it said, you know, Strauss was dead, and I was like, no, like, this isn't real. This didn't happen. Like On Saturday, June 19th, 27-year-old former Shippensburg University field hockey player and coach Amanda Strauss died in a Charlotte-area hospital after being strangled and left for dead in her burning apartment. Stay with us after tonight's show to see Shippensburg field hockey's journey to honor a fallen teammate. When we come back, the newest sci-fi adventure movie is bringing in audiences of all ages. And a darker orange is on the way. Entertainment is next. I don't want to steal Amanda's forecasting thunder, but you're graduating on Saturday. How do you feel about the washout that it looks like we're going to get? I'm pretty upset. I had images of this beautiful, you know, sunny graduation and doesn't look like it's going to be that way. But, In the field house. But hopefully Mother's Day will be nice. I'm holding out hope for Mother's Day. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's send it to Amanda with the weather. It seems those April showers linger well into May. Let's see what the graduation forecast looks like. Tonight we have a low of 47 and cloudy. Tomorrow a 70% chance of rain and a high of 53. And in the five day, Looks like a wet graduation. The graduation forecast is calling for rain and a high of 53. Sunday, partly sunny and a high of 68. The weather is improving for Mother's Day. Monday, the sun returns and sticks around for at least through the midweek with a high of 70. Tuesday, a high of 78. And Wednesday, a high of 83. Well, school's out for summer and so am I. Congrats to all the seniors and have a good summer, Ship. Let's get started. Nicki Minaj gave a generous gift to her Twitter followers Saturday night. She offered to pay a few of her followers college's cost. The only requirements were straight A's. Minaj came up with the idea after a fan jokingly asked her to pay his college tuition. It only lasted for a couple of hours, but Minaj said she will do it again in a couple of months. Former Dance Mom star Abby Lee Miller is going to jail. She was sentenced Tuesday to a year and a day in prison for bankruptcy fraud. The judge ordered her to pay a $40,000 fine along with two years on probation. Miller had left Dance Moms back in March. ABC is bringing back American Idol. The singing competition is coming back after low ratings drove the show off the air. ABC recently confirmed Ryan Seacrest's return to the show. Season 16 is set to begin next year. Netflix released a trailer for season five of Orange is the New Black. The trailer sets a darker tone than previous season but it looks like you don't have to wait long until, until June 9th to watch this new season. A hacker group leaked a few episodes after Netflix failed to meet their demand of 50 bitcoins. Netflix is still releasing the new season on schedule. And Marvel's team of space outlaws returned heroes are back in theaters. Ray Shungle reviews Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. 
Family is a big theme in Volume 2. If the first Guardians of the Galaxy was about bringing the team together, Volume 2 is about testing that bond. After establishing the group dynamic, the film splits the team up for more personal stories. Gamora and Drax join Peter after reuniting with his father, while Rocket and Groot end up paired with Yondu after having lost control of his gang, the Ravagers. Now whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately and we'll all be dead. Now repeat back what I just said. I am Groot. No! No, that's the button that will kill everyone! Try again. I am Groot. Mm-hmm. I am Groot. Uh-huh. I am Groot. No! It's tough to catch lightning in a bottle twice. Exactly what director James Gunn tried to do here. Ultimately, the pacing of splitting the characters leaves Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 behind its predecessor. Flushing out these individual stories makes Volume 2 seem a bit unwieldy, but the film still proves to be fun with a lot of heart. It's another adventure with these characters, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 delivers, earning the film 4 out of 5 stars. Reviewing for SGTV Entertainment, I'm Ray Shungle. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 kicked off the summer film season with a bang, earning $425 million. That's it for SUTV Entertainment. Let's send it back to the desk. When we come back in sports, a look back at Raiders seasons. And more ship record breakers. Shippensburg had a dominating year on all playing fields. Josh Charles has the year in review. Shippensburg Red Raiders finished 7-4 on the season, giving up the fewest points in school history since 2011 and was the only NCAA Division II team to lose one fumble all season. Shippensburg field hockey team finished an outstanding season winning their second national title in school history by defeating LIU Post 2-1. The Raiders led all of Division II in winning percent, goals against average, save percentage, and shutouts. Head coach Bernie Landis announced her retirement in December after leading the team for 18 seasons, posting a career record of 302 wins and 77 losses. Shippensburg's men's and women's basketball teams both had an impressive year, finishing the season with a record of 27 and four. The men's team took home their first PSAC conference championship since 1991, defeating PSAC rival Kutztown University 73 to 63. It's just believing, you know. My mom tells me from day one, you gotta believe. And when I came into this program after the first year, it was real tough, it was real difficult. But Coach Fight, he always said, uh, you keep cracking at the stone, you keep cracking at the stone, no matter how long it takes, you don't stop cracking. I mean, you don't stop hitting the stone, it's gonna crack. The men also picked up their first NCAA championship tournament win over Virginia Union. The women's team posted an 18-game win streak under head coach Christy Turn, making the first time a PSAC team went unbeaten in conference play since 2011. Senior Stephanie Nauer was named PSAC East Athlete of the Year, while seniors Morgan Griffith and Colleen Young were named to the PSAC East first team. Ship success puts the Raiders on top of the PSAC conference for this year's Dixon Trophy. For SUTV Sports, I'm Josh Charles. The Dixon Cup results will be announced in late May following the completion of spring sports. Senior Jake Kennedy hit his 21st home run of the season Sunday, breaking the single season record for home runs and RBIs as the men's baseball team split a pair of games against Millersville University. Kennedy's home run ties the PSAC conference record for career home runs with 44. Shippensburg enters the PSAC baseball championship as the number two seed with a 19-9 divisional record, the team's best record under 11-year head coach Matt Jones. Shippensburg takes on number one team in the nation, Mercyhurst, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. The men's and women's outdoor track and field teams dominated the PSAC conference last weekend as the men claimed their ninth straight championship. The women claimed their eighth consecutive title. For the second time in PSAC history, the men's team achieved the triple crown, winning the conference championship in cross country and men's indoor and outdoor track and field in the same year. Shippensburg's Sarah Hunt was named the PSAC Championship Most Valuable Athlete for claiming the title in the triple jump, placing second in the long jump, and third in the 100-meter dash. Ship men are now nationally ranked as the 21st team in the country, while the men, women, are ranked 17th in the nation. Don't forget, after tonight's show, Shippensburg field hockey was struck with tragedy before last season. 
Find out how they rose up to honor a fellow Raider. That's it for sports. Now let's head over to the desk where we give our seniors one final goodbye. This is one of the favorite things that I do all year as I get to um, spend some time on the set with my students. I'm Kim Garris, the advisor for SUTV, and it's a tradition these guys started several years ago that I would join them um, on the last show of the year if there were a graduating senior. Well, guess what? We got a boatload of graduating <laughs> seniors this time, and so we also take a moment to honor them and let them know how much we appreciate them and let you meet all of them. Sometimes you've met them and sometimes you haven't. So first, I'm just going to have them go down the line and uh, say their names if I'm not trapped in here. There we go. Just doing names? Yeah, just say a little bit about um, your four years. <laughs> Right. Something poignant. <laughs> um, I'm Darby Sells. Last year I was the news director and live events producer. Um, I'm Amanda Chivo. I also held a leadership position for the past two years. Oh, this camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm Marina Barnett. Um, I was the web executive producer and desk anchor, and then I anchored entertainment this semester. Zach has a mic. I'm Zach oh, Sells. <laughs> I've had the privilege of covering all the sports here for the past couple of years. Yeah. Uh, I'm Justin Miller. <laughs> I've had the privilege of doing play-by-play -play for football last year. I'm Ian Fitzgerald, and I'm the former GM of SUTV, and I've really enjoyed my time here and every, coming here every Thursday. And I'm Ray Shungle. Uh, I'm the only one who hasn't been a leader at this yeah. point. And, uh, sorry about that. That's okay. And, uh, you You're may here. Have, you, may have, <laughs> you, may have heard, you may have heard my voice, all those riveting movie reviews this semester. <laughs> uh, riveting and, they were. And usually when I'm when I'm not out here in the studio, I'm the one in charge of audio all the time. <laughs> so we don't know how you're being heard right now. No, no. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about leaving my soundboard. <laughs> yeah, you get protective after a while, don't you? Oh, yeah. So these guys have had um, a really eventful two, three, four years, depending on um, how long they've been with me. Many of the students that we have transfer. Uh, many of them start with me from Little Cubs, like Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then some of them come in after a couple of years, like Marina. Zach did that too. Justin, you came in, yeah? yeah. Ian, you've been with me most all the time, right? Yeah. And Ray? I've I can't rem You've been here four years? <laughs> I, I can't remember. Up. He's just always around. I so just, showed, up. I just <laughs> showed up. Yeah. So uh, I want to wish them all the best and send them off um, into exciting careers. Um, they're all sort of getting things up and running for that. I keep them busy until the very last minute, so. I'll be hearing from them uh, for references and letters and look at my resume and this kind of stuff. So anything you guys want to say? Uh, Ian got his chance to say a few things. Oh, he uh, wants to say something yeah, else. Yeah, I just wanted to thank all the viewers <laughs> that tune in every Thursday yeah. for watching all the hard work we put in. Uh, it really means a lot knowing that what we do actually means something. Yeah. And it is a great training ground. So these guys walk out of here with jobs because they've done this for four years. And I should tell you, they do this voluntarily. They don't get paid for this. They do it because they love it and because they know it's good for their careers. So hats <laughs> off to them. They've done a great job. All right, Marina, one last time. For the last time ever, <laughs> that's it for SUTV News. I'm Marina Barnett. And I'm Kim Garris. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, everything else, SUTV <laughs> News. Uh, dot com, that's our website. You have lots of ways to get to us. <laughs> and don't go away because Zach will be right back with a tribute to Shippensburg University's late field hockey coach. The old adage goes, when you get knocked down, get right back up. Last year, Shippensburg field hockey took what looked to be a knockout punch. Instead of giving up something everyone would have understood, they rose to their feet to honor a fallen teammate and put it all on the table for the number 22. 18th was an ordinary summer day for Shippensburg field hockey. Coming off a disappointing 2015, the Lady Raiders were enjoying summer break, prepping for a new season with high hopes and expectations. That was all about to change. I remember hearing my phone buzz, and I was like, who would be calling me? Like, this feels so early in the morning. It was around like 7 o'clock, and it said Lauren Taylor was calling me. LT was a senior my freshman year, um, I was, and I didn't wake up in time to answer it, and I was like, well, do I go back to sleep, or do I call her back? And I was like, okay, well, I should call her back, because why would she be calling me? Like, she could have just sent a text. She ended up texting me right away, and was like, hey, Fish, you need to call me as soon as you can. So I called her back, 
And word for word, she goes, hey, fish, um, I have some bad news. And I was like, okay. And she goes, I know you and Coach just got back from Australia, and I know you had Kelly's wedding yesterday, and I don't want to ruin an exciting time for you, but um, Strauss uh, died yesterday. I was coming back from the beach, and I checked my phone, and I had like 20 missed calls, 20 missed messages on GroupMe, and it said, you know, Strauss was dead, and I was like, no, like, this isn't real. This didn't happen. Like On Saturday, June 19th, 27-year-old former Shippensburg University field hockey player and coach Amanda Strauss died in a Charlotte-area hospital after being strangled and left for dead in her burning apartment. Like, sitting in my bed that day and just refreshing Google, like, Amanda Strauss murder. And throughout the day, more and more would pop up, but it's like every article didn't have that much information. So like we were all just striving for information. Like how could this happen? How did it happen? Why did it happen? And on Google and I kept researching, re-looking, re-checking, trying to find articles, kind of researching. I stayed up all night and I kept like going through, it was like two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, I kept going through and I was like, this isn't real. Like this can't be true, like there, there's something wrong with the story. Like The story was right though. Just one month before her wedding, Amanda Strauss had been murdered. Two months later, at Shippensburg's annual alumni game, players and coaches past and present, cloaked in Amanda's color purple, honored their fallen captain. What a privilege it is to stand here before you today. We welcome you to our alumni game. It's a very special time in which we're gonna honor our friend, our teammate, and our coach. We wanna thank her dear family for coming. For mom and dad, Crystal and Eric, for her big brothers, although they were little brothers to her, Kyle and Garrett, and to the love of her life, Corey. We love you all. I want to thank you for the impact your daughter, sister, and sweetheart had on our lives. They would not allow the impact Amanda had go to waste, but would rise up in her honor. I think right away we wanted to leave uh, a legacy of our own in her memory. Um, she had uh, been such an important part of our program and had loved the kids so much and had such a passion for the game. And I think everyone that met her, that was coached by her, that played with her, realized um, that they could be a better person because of her impact on their life. With heavy hearts, a team that was internally fractured just one year prior cemented themselves as a team with a single phrase. Live, laugh, love, and leave a legacy. They were all in for their number 22. It definitely made our senior class a lot stronger together and more connected together and we're like the best friends like ever. And we just have, we have that chemistry and then made it not just us seniors, but our whole class and like our whole team like stronger together. Every day we just were very humbled and came back to reality. If we didn't do well at a practice or a game or things didn't go our way, we're like, you know what? We're gonna be okay, we have someone on our side. And we kind of just told the team like, hey look, this was a crappy situation that happened. Like, it touched all of us. Whether you were a freshman who didn't know her or you were a junior or a senior who had a season or two with her. Like, this stuff touches everyone. But we need to push on and we need to just live this season for her and make her proud and leave our legacy, but yet carry on Strauss's legacy as well. As the season began, Amanda's number 22 jersey would travel to every home and away game, gracing the sidelines, even without being present, making an impact as the team's 12th man. I'm not sure how many of you guys follow football. Um, the Seattle Seahawks are known for their 12th man. And for those of you who don't know what that 12th man means, they, they give credit to their fans for being that 12th man on the field, for giving them the support to succeed throughout their season. Um, I do think that the ship hockey program will forever have a 12th man here, forever. Like, immediately when we got the news, everyone was just like, you guys have a 12th player now. Like, be grateful for it. And that's what it was. Like, you looked at that jersey and it was like she was right beside you. And it was just a constant reminder of who she was as a person, who she was as a player, as a coach. And for me personally, I just really wanted to take that and just make myself a better person and a better player. 
she liked help us guide to wherever we need to go. Like she pushed us through, like she was our motivation. I look at that jersey and be like, if Strauss was here right now, she would give it her all. Like say we were losing. I look at that jersey and I'm like, Fish, you need to give it your all, like snap out of it, like let's go. So it was always a nice constant reminder. Along with their 12th man, the Raiders racked up win after win, vaulting up the Division II rankings to the number one spot. Amanda's impact reached far beyond the fences of Rob Sports Complex. On October 12th, Shippensburg loaded their sticks on the bus as the number one team in the nation for the biggest game of the regular season, an in-conference matchup with the number three team in the nation and longtime rival Millersville. They arrived not to a hostile foe, but friends lending a hand. That was amazing how other teams like Millersville did all that stuff for us. Just knowing that field hockey is just, it's just a game. And knowing that people to see how much impact it was towards us. And they were like, wow, like that's their coach. Like they care a lot for her and everything. And we're going to do something in honor of her because they knew her as well, just maybe just as a coach. But it was nice that they have done that. It was really uh Nice to see that even when you're such big rifles, that at the end of the day, a light, a someone's life and the celebration of someone's life goes above that. And that um, just like that minute of silence and uh, like, a th like some nice words from someone you play at the end of the day, that goes above everything else. I just remember um, Coach Baron grabbed my hand and she was like, come on, fish, let's start this thing. Like, we're one right now. So it was a really touching moment. To me, just standing together in unity. I mean, we are, again, such fierce competitors. Sometimes it looks like we're against each other when you're competing, but we're truly in it together. So it was just an idea. I asked Coach if she would be good with just standing together as a circle of unity in regards to Amanda and her life and what she meant to the ship family. And so, honestly, from, from that point, it just felt right to do. And This would not be the last time Shippensburg would face Millersville, losing 2-1 to one to them in the PSAC championship game, dropping them to a number three seed in the Atlantic region of the NCAA tournament. But once again, as the Raiders were most vulnerable, their number 22 lent a helping hand. When we lost the PSAC game, all I could think of was our freshman year when we lost PSACs to Millersville. And Strauss and Tina Taylor, a former um, field hockey member as well, they talked to us and they kind of were just like, you know, it sucks right now, let it out, but we're just going to come back stronger and that's exactly what we did. And we knew that we were the best and that Amanda was with us and she was going to help us get to where we knew we could be and we knew, know where we should be. There were no doubts Shippensburg came ready to play when the tournament began. They defeated East Stroudsburg 2-1 in the opening round, the 300th win of Birdie Land's career securing a rematch with Millersville in the Final Four. All season long, the team leaned on its 12th, waiting for her to show up in times of need, as destiny would have it when the team arrived at Stonehill University for the Final Four. She was already there, awaiting her Raiders wrapped in a sea of purple. Walking into that game, uh, there was just a great sense of this is our time and we're going to overcome. And uh, then going into Stonehill, uh, Stonehill's color was purple and that was Amanda Strauss's color. And that was just so, it was mind boggling to walk into that stadium and see all that purple, to go in the locker room and see purple walls. It was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> Strauss, what are you saying to us here? And uh, it, it was just an overwhelming feeling of this was our time and that we were a team of destiny. After we got off the bus and we saw that, I, we all kind of had goosebumps and I could just feel all of our hearts like sink to our stomachs and we were all like, this is it. Like, she's here, she's with us. Even like throughout the season and in my life now, there's been so many times where I see purple or I see a 22 and I'm like, hey Strauss, like what's up, how's it going? So just to be in such an intense environment because environment, because it is the final four, um, Everybody's kind of like on edge in a way just to see all that purple. It's kind of just like whew, calm down like we got our 12th man looking over us like it, it was kind of meant to be like you said pure destiny in a way. Sporting purple wristbands and cleats, Shippensburg defeated Millersville 1-0 to to advance the NCAA Finals with a chance to win their second national title. Their opponent was LIU Post, the same team they defeated just four years earlier to win their first title, a team led by graduate assistant. Amanda Strauss. 
Shippensburg jumped out to an early lead off a diving tip by junior Emily Bernard in the seventh minute. With just under nine minutes left, senior Caitlin Grazon all but secured the game for the Raiders, giving them a 2-0 lead. I don't think we ever felt that we had the victory. You know, even when we went up 2-0, which is amazing to score that second goal, what a relief. Uh, and then it was chaos the last couple minutes of the game, and we kind of lost our focus and didn't do the things that took us to, to the six minutes. LIU Post capitalized off the Raiders' lap, scoring a goal with 4.14 left, bringing them within one, then pulling their goalie for a last-second attempt to steal the Raiders' glory. My heart was racing and everything, but like I knew like I had great teams behind, like my team behind me, and I just knew like we have to win this game. Well, they pulled their goalie, and I don't even think our forwards and mids realized it happened, so me and Mooney are just back there yelling like, just drive the ball, like there's no goalie. And I just kept looking at the clock and it was ticking down and ticking out, ticking down and then. Those final moments were probably most stressful in my life and my coach always jokes, she's like, those are the longest two minutes of my life. And they really were, cause like you said, like they pulled their goalie, their, their top forward was like on our goalie. The Raiders, a team who posted 14 shutouts during the regular season, had one great defensive performance left. Capped off by a highlight save by goalie Allie Mooney. Shippensburg secured and cleared the ball. The clock struck zero, capping a fairy tale season. A rare moment where destiny and reality meet in a snapshot cementing the legacy of a team and their beloved number 22. Hey, So blue. I just draw my stick and I like we all like ran towards each other and like hugged each other and I wasn't even thinking about where the trophy was or anything. I was just like hugging people. We were so happy. And, and just excitement. We put the jersey over the trophy and we lifted up and we started chanting 22 because that's what we always do. And now I started crying because I was like, this was all for you. Yes, like we had aspirations before this traumatic. Um, incident happened, but truly when it happened, I, I was like, this is all for Amanda. That's all I ever wanted to, to, was to honor her. That we put the jersey on there was like so emotional that we played, we gave it all because we wanted to win. And we definitely wanted to win for her and her honor. We got that trophy and we put that jersey on there. And I think a lot of people can agree that was probably like one of the most special moments we had with the team. The championship game wouldn't be Amanda's last performance. On Saturday, February 11th, the Raiders finally received their championship rings. Every player was awarded a ring for their contributions, including their 12th man, Amanda Strauss. Now at this time, we would like to thank past the Strauss family to please come forward. In honor of Amanda Strauss, whose lasting legacy will forever be present with the SU field hockey family, today, Shippensburg University is presenting the Strauss family with an NCAA championship ring for Amanda. Fly high, 22. We all were standing there waiting to walk out to get our rings, and it was so weird. The basketball game was still going on, and the one team called a timeout, and the clock stopped with 22 seconds left. And we all were like, hey, Strauss, like, you're here with us right now. So that was really cool to just have another sign right before we're going to get our rings and then just for everybody to see it. Like I love seeing 22 everywhere. Like I said, it's just like a constant reminder that she's always here with us. Yeah, it was very emotional. Um, it was an honor to do that and a privilege. I really thank our administration, our athletic administration for allowing that to happen. Uh, it was very meaningful to them because they uh, realized the impact again of what their daughter had on our program and will continue to have. And I think that's very, very important to the family, to know that she won't be forgotten, that she always will be number 22 to us. The team's goal before the season was to live life the way Amanda did, by her motto, live, laugh, love. By doing so, they cemented the legacy of Amanda Strauss that will live on with ship field hockey. In Amanda's honor, Shippensburg University started the Amanda Strauss Annual Scholarship, given to a junior field hockey player that exhibits the high standards of excellence set by Amanda. That player will wear Amanda's number 22 jersey during their senior year, ensuring that Shippensburg field hockey will forever carry with them their 12th.